Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. When I heard about the Indians trade this morning, I said, good, the team is a buyer. When the trading deadline came and went, they turned out to be sellers, not something their fans wanted. The Indians can still win their division this year, but the team they're going to put on the field the rest of the season won't be any better than the one that started the day with. Anthony Lima is here. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. And uh, the baseball trade deadline has come and gone. The Indians were involved in the marquee trade of the day, trading away a frontline pitcher in Mike Clevenger to the San Diego Padres, but not getting that impact bat in the outfield that everybody thought they needed. The Indians and Padres involved in a nine-player trade. Here's how it breaks down. The Indians send Mike Clevenger, Greg Allen, and a player to be named later to the Padres for three players that will be on the major league roster and three more prospects. Major leaguers are outfielder Josh Naylor, pitcher Cal Quantrell, and catcher Austin Hedges. In an associated roster move, the Indians have designated Domingo Santana for assignment. The outfield bat that the Indians got was not the big time hitter that they really need. Outfielder Josh Naylor, the 12th overall selection in the 2015 MLB draft, has spent parts of the last two seasons with the Padres. Batting 250, 15 doubles, 8 homers, 34 runs batted in in 111 games. This year, Naylor has split time in the big leagues and the Padres' alternate site, going 10 for 36, a home run and 4 RBIs in his time with San Diego. He was profiled as a power hitter who really hasn't gotten consistent at bats, but he's only 23 and has already spent parts of the last couple of years in the majors. He is the older brother of Bo Naylor, Indians' first-round pick in 2018. Cal Quantrill, right-handed pitcher who has started and pitched out of the bullpen in San Diego, was the eighth overall pick by the Padres in the 2016 draft. That's the same draft where the Indians took Aaron Savali in the third round, Shane Bieber in the fourth round, Zach Plesac in the twelfth round. Quantrill is 25, the son of major league pitcher Paul Quantrill. He's a guy that could benefit greatly from the Indians' pitching development people. Was moved to the bullpen this year and has been pitching very well since the move because he's attacking each hitter instead of worrying about saving his stuff. Scouting report on Quantrill is that his velocity is inconsistent, sometimes living in the mid-90s, 95-96 range, other times 90-91. Best secondary pitch a changeup, again inconsistent. Also throws a slider in the mid-80s and a curveball that needs some refinement. Quantrill missed most of his sophomore year in college, all of his junior year at Stanford after undergoing Tommy John surgery but the Indians have shown they know how to develop guys like this into elite major league pitchers. Indians also get catcher Austin Hedges, very good defensive catcher that won't hit much. He's a pretty good backup, and he was the second player as far as defensive runs saved in all of Major League Baseball a season ago behind Roberto Perez. Antonetti explains what the Indians were thinking with the major leaguers. Uh, Josh Naylor is a left-handed hitting uh, corner player that uh, we feel has got a chance to be a very good contributor offensively. He's got a track record of hitting in the minors, um, puts the ball in play consistently, makes really hard contact, and we think those are two good ingredients for him to have a successful career as a major league hitter. Uh, Cal Quantrill is currently a really successful major league reliever uh, with a pedigree of starting. Uh, currently, he'll go into our bullpen and be an asset for us there, but we think he has a chance to be not only a successful reliever, but a successful starting pitcher. Uh, Austin Hedges uh, is renowned for his elite defensive ability, uh, does an extraordinary job of leading the pitching staff, really excels in all areas uh, behind the plate. So he'll join Roberto Perez and Sandy Leone um, with what we feel is now the best defensive catching contingent in the, in the major leagues. Indians also got some really good prospects, a couple of 20-year-olds. 
Um, shortstop Gabe Arias, 20 years old, hit 302, 75 runs batted in in high A last year as a 19 year old. He's a top 100 prospect in all of Major League Baseball and is considered an elite defender as a shortstop. Another 20 year old, left handed pitcher Joey Cantillo, 10 and 4 between high A and A last year, 2.26 ERA. He had better than a strikeout per inning pitch and hitters managed just a 179 batting average against Cantillo a season ago. Third prospect is Owen Miller. He's a little older, he's 23, because he was drafted after playing a couple years of college baseball. Miller hit 290, 13 home runs, eight runs batted in at AA Armarillo last year. Has drawn comparisons to Ben Zobrist for his versatility and ability to hit the ball. Chris Antonetti likes all three of these guys a whole lot. In terms of the minor league players, uh, Arias is a young Venezuelan shortstop that's really skilled defensively. Uh, we think he's got a chance to be an above average defender. He's also made great strides at the plate offensively, had a breakout year in 2019 uh, in, the, in the California League. Um, Cantillo is a uh, lean, projectable left hander, six foot four left hander that's got a very deceptive fastball changeup combination with a developing breaking ball. Our pitching group is really excited to have an opportunity to uh, partner with him in his development. And then lastly, Owen Miller is a uh, very versatile right-handed hitting infielder that can play all three infield spots. Uh, he actually skipped high A, went right to double A uh, in 2019 and succeeded there. So a handful of guys that we think, again, not only um, impact our team this year, but add depth to our system and position us to be successful in years to come. Indians front office has been very good at uh, projecting guys and developing them in trades like this. Now, Zach Plesek will be recalled to take Mike Clevenger's spot in the rotation, and Clevenger is without a doubt a really good pitcher. One thing that has to be a concern, the wear and tear that is unorthodox pitching motion puts not only on his arm, but his entire body. When you look at his innings pitch, Clevenger's only pitched more than 130 innings in one year had back and ankle injuries last year. Knee injury that would have cost him a significant part of this season if it were to begin at, uh, on time. Now admittedly, it's a double-edged sword. The arm doesn't have the mileage on it, but can the body take the pounding that his delivery puts on it? That concern, along with upcoming arbitration payday and Clevenger, um, he dismissed the notion that breaking COVID protocol created a lot of bad blood between not only his teammates, but the front office as well. As ugly as things got for a minute, uh, like I said, that was such a good group of guys. We, we pulled it together. I mean, my relationships, I mean, it was already starting to be rebuilt, I guess. I don't think it was ever fully lost, man. I think it was more just a disappointed. It's like a, you know, like a friend let you down. It's not like a friend, like, you know, completely screwed you over. They were never kicking you to the curb. I mean, the texts I received from the guys on the team, even some of the ones that were really mad, you know, I mean, just show it. Uh, I don't think I ruined my legacy with them or here and I have no bad blood against them. I understand why they're disappointed. I understand, you know, the, the distraction that it caused alone, what could have came out of that. So, uh, no, no, no bad blood. Definitely looking at just the depth and the way the pitching develops over here. It's, uh, you know, almost like an endless supply. It seems like over the past couple of years, but, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, especially the way Indians, you know, kind of do things, which is, you know, they're, they're there to win every year. So, I mean, anybody has a price. Everybody has a price tag. I think everybody in the organization knows that. There's no one that's, you know, really untouchable over there. So you kind of have that in the back of your mind. There wasn't really like a, a timer on it, but I knew that it, it could be very plausible this season or this offseason. Presque Isle Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Do you like Ohio State football? Would you like to get information from me, Doug Maurice, about Ohio State football without having to look at my face? We have got the plan for you. Become an Ohio State text subscriber through cleveland.com. You send a text, 614-350-3315. What do you get? Two, three, four texts right in your phone every day 
about Ohio State football, inside information, polls, voting, all kinds of things. You can be on our podcast. We take X subscriber questions on our Buckeye Talk podcast every week. If you really want to be involved with Ohio State football, in season or out of season, become an Ohio State tech subscriber from Cleveland.com. Send a text to 614-350-3315. 14-day free trial. What do you have to lose? $3.99 a month after that. 614-350-3315. I'll see you in your phone. Tri-C is here for you. Now more than ever, you need a post-secondary education. So I encourage you to start your journey here at Tri-C. The majority of fall classes will take place online, but we've added a variety of formats to meet your learning needs, and we've taken many steps to keep you safe on campus. Whether you're ready to get started or your four-year plans have changed, Tri-C is where futures begin. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Good job by uh, Dave Bacon on Bacon Bits, putting that whole package together about the trade today. Anthony Lima is here from 92.3 The Fan. Hello, Anthony. Yeah, I, I thought there was something wrong with my mic. I was trying to respond to a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the stuff that Mr. Bacon put out there, but he just never talked back to me. I was nervous. It's called tape. So they cut my mic. It's called tape. It's oh, a okay. New invention that they have. All right, so what do you think? The, first of all, Chris Antonetti was working late last night. They announced it. You were on the air this morning when they announced the trade, right? So add three hours to that, uh, the San Diego time. They're, those guys uh, knocking on some doors late at night. I always wonder when you think about the jobs that you can get into in sports, I don't think a lot of people understand the scouting in Major League Baseball and especially for a ball club like the Indians. Uh, that is going to be their, their major way to try to build a team is through scouting other organizations and plucking those guys at the right time and I wonder how difficult that was this year knowing that you could only rely on last year's minor league stats and the video that you had if, and what your scouting told you if you're you that, got no new information this no year. but if you're that good you can steal some guys and they have you know that there's a reason that the Indians have been able to continue to be good with this payroll I know it's frustrating we're going to be frustrated tomorrow morning uh, when I go on the air on 923 The Fan with Ken, I, I'm, I'm going to criticize. And I haven't done that a lot with the Indians this year. And uh, I know there's some flaws on this team, but I have to be critical because this is a team that's in first place in the division. They have one of the best run differentials in baseball. Vegas thinks they're one of the top four or five teams in the bigs to have a chance to win the World Series. And this is just the opposite of going all in. They didn't go all in. You know, They uh, went all in in 2016. They went all in in 2017, even a bit in 2018. Uh, now they're sending a message that they're just unwilling to do that and to do that on the on the precipice of, you know, removing Francisco Lindor, which is a foregone conclusion this yeah. offseason. And one's going to sting with fans if this team doesn't go far into the playoffs. You know, it, it looked like they were going to go with uh, not necessarily cleaning house, but a couple of blockbusters at the first first take this morning. And then, as, as it turned out, there was a prelude to nothing. Yeah, not only that, uh, I mean, you have to in a deal with Mike Clevenger and a guy as talented as he is. And I know they kick you out the door. I'm um, hearing some Indians fans do that with Clevenger. But let's be honest. Think of how favorably we were talking about Clevenger before the year started and how big of a piece he was in our rotation. Yeah. I know he's 30. I know he has a violent delivery. Uh, he's also really good. And he's also a guy that I'd have more faith in. Uh, and I know it's small sample size for a lot of pitchers when it comes to the postseason. I mean, Clayton Kershaw, look at look at the amount of times that he has flamed out in big games. What, you still wouldn't want that guy? You're telling me you wouldn't no, want to give the ball to somebody like Clayton Kershaw in a big game? It's nonsense. Mm -hmm. Mike Clevenger is a guy that you, you would. And now, as you see, uh, right now, their rotation starts to make you a little nervous about Putko. And I don't know what to expect from Plesak. And Carrasco did come off a nice outing, but he had struggled. And... 
boy, Savali just couldn't miss bats at all yesterday in St. Louis. So this was your strength. You took away from your strength, and you did not have a serious upgrade in the outfield. No, but there's there's no uh, uh, roster out there on any other team that can go as deep as Cleveland could have. You take a look at the beginning of the season when you you had uh, you, you give up uh, Kluber and you, you start giving up these other guys, and you're still pretty well in depth as far as the pitching staff is concerned. Well, without a doubt, um, look, they've been the best rotation in baseball very quietly. They this year are the best bullpen in baseball by some statistical metrics. So, right, so wait, they so have how can, really put it all. So how can they not? They've really put it all together in that right, regard. They get they get the starting pitching, they get the relief pitching. Why can't they get position players? It's the same group of guys spelling out the talent out there. I think at times the Indians uh, they get a little delusional with some of their weaknesses, but they have to be because they're just not going to spend the money. And I'm sitting there going, Yasiel Puig, still available, but nobody else in baseball seems to want to budge yeah. on him. And from what I heard about what went on in the clubhouse last year and him showing up late uh, to meetings and on, on game days, that's, that, that ship has clearly sailed. Can't do but that. I think they were a little delusional about some of those outfielders and the platoons that they have going. 216-575-0403. You can email us during the show at reallesslevine at gmail.com. Hey, Anthony, somebody told me at the beginning of your show, which goes from 6 until 10, you are no longer using the homage to more sports in Les Levine, or you are? When you say, we oh, do it at the end of the show, Les. Yeah, but you, do, end, you still do it, though, right? Yes, at the very end of the show, if you listen at 10, and people are not going to want to hear that you're tuning out. Baskin and Phelps are not going to be happy about this. They're right on after us. We're supposed to provide a, a heavy-duty lead-in uh, to their renowned program, I, I which just, has now been around for nine years. I, I How just, many radio shows have ever lasted nine years in the city of Cleveland history? No, well, we're going into our 25th year. That's pretty good. Consecutively. Consecutively. 216-575-0403. I know you used to play it at the end of the show. I just thought somebody told me that you don't play it anymore at all. But I can rest assured that you do. Excellent. You're getting it from, from a pretty good source here. Excellent. All right, let's take a break. We'll come on back. We'll continue to talk about the Clevenger trade and more. Northeast Factory Direct, three great locations plus the website. you got to go to the website first. Find out how you're going to save money and save uh, as much as up to 50% and even more on many items. Let's take a break. We'll come back in a moment. Uh, Anthony Lima with us. More sports and less Levine powered by Cleveland.com. Wow. Get Nature Stone and never replace your garage flooring again. Act now for huge summer savings on our exclusive Nature's Blend Stone. As low as $2.99 a square foot plus installation. Only Nature Stone eliminates cracked, uneven concrete. And Nature Stone never peels like cheap paints and coatings. Safe, beautiful garage flooring that's always backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Welcome back to more sports and Les Sylvine. Les, Anthony, with the Browns injury to Grant Delpit, they have a serious hole at safety. Over the weekend, it was reported that the Browns were interested in Logan Ryan, who has said that he wanted to, teams to look at him as a safety. Well, you can see his stats right there, but it, came, it just came out not too long ago that he's signing with the Giants. So I want to look at a couple other names that the Browns might be able to look at at safety. One is Earl Thomas. He's 31 years old, 10 NFL seasons. He's a seven-time Pro Bowler, but he's got his character issues that caused the Ravens to release him. 
Another one is Eric Reed, a safety 28 years old, NFL, seven NFL seasons with the 49ers and Panthers. Had 130 tackles, seven tackles for loss, four sacks, and a fumble, and a fumble force in 2019, all career highs. 11 career interceptions in 99 games, and he was released after one year after signing a three-year contract with Carolina. So Les, Anthony, want to see if either of those guys are someone you might want to look at, or if there's someone other avenue you might want to explore to help fill this safety depth. Well, Reed interests me a little bit. I'm not sure about the, the other guy. I don't think I need, at this stage of the game, I don't think I need problems in the locker room. Anthony, how about you? Well, I've said that this is one situation where I think I would, I would take a shot. And uh, I'd, take, I'd pluck the Raven, the guy who knows about them and wants to beat them and wants to go on a revenge tour. And that normally isn't me, but I'm so desperate right now for this defense. We already knew they came into the season with arguably the worst linebacking core in the NFL. And now the hit that the, the safeties have took, uh, we got some better news on Greedy Williams, but uh, in the secondary, as far as, you know, the corner position, but you, right now that back seven and a lot of times in football back eight, uh, when you're, when you're going up against these prolific passing offenses, uh, they are really, really in a significant hole. And I don't know how they get better there unless they get serious. I thought Logan Ryan made a lot of sense, seven and a half million dollars. That wasn't, that much uh, that's a veteran who knows how to play the game we went up against them last year so i think that's a missed opportunity and i'm worried enough about the things uh, that this, this team the issues that the browns have with no preseason games new coach terrible year to hire a new coach and have an install i get why they did it uh but now they're running out of time and unfortunately it looks like they're running out of players on defense now, your point about the linebacker core really astounds me because somebody told me they did it on purpose. They set it up that way. And I can't imagine what purpose that would be. Uh, why would you weaken when, when you're, you're pretty strong at the uh, defensive line and, and if everybody's healthy yeah. in the backfield? Why would you uh, sabotage it on purpose? They didn't even make an offer to Joe Schobert. Now, a lot of people had moved on. A lot of Browns fans had said, hey, this guy makes a lot of tackles, but they're down the field. He's not exactly making elite level plays but he was a big time vet in the locker room and he knew how to play the position and there's another defensive coordinator this year they get a new one every single year uh, yeah. with the browns this one is joe woods obviously from san francisco but it would have been nice to have veterans that had been here that could kind of stabilize that they went in a different direction with some stop gaps but it's a position uh that is in need and now that's secondary because of some injuries they are a big time need it just shows you how, how much the game has changed because at one time the linebacker was probably the most important part of the, the defensive uh, unit. Um, I, I was kind of surprised on uh, Mac Wilson that he's only going to be out four to six weeks. Now, I know that that's, that's a lot of time, but I was expecting a lot more. So I guess that's a little bit of good news. Yeah, opting not to go the way of the surgery. Hopefully yeah. that is the right move and that he's going to be able to play through this when he gets back on the field in four to six weeks. But, uh, you know, he made some Johnny on the spot plays last year. Uh, pro football focus was kind of eh on him uh, analytically wise. I'll be curious to see how he does, but that injury is a setback. It's unfortunate. It would have been nice to have him start the season, know he's the starter, and go in with that level of confidence that he might not have had a year ago when he was trying to earn a position while guys like Christian Kirksey were ahead of him at the start of the year and also Joe Schobert. Do you get the feeling as, as you're waiting for the season to start, which is next week already, that we were waiting and yeah. waiting and waiting couldn't, didn't know if you're going to have any football. Now all of a sudden it creeps up on you and it won't stop. Um, and, and your statement is, is probably correct that uh, while, while the Browns are in a situation where everybody else is in the same position, uh, it will hurt them, should, probably would hurt them more than, than any other uh, franchise. I mean, look, if the Browns pull this off in week one against uh, the, one of the best teams in the NFL, at least last year, a team that added Calais Campbell, uh, they know their system, they're coming back with the NFL MVP, a team that's hungry the way things fell apart against the Titans in the playoff game last year. Uh, I don't envy Stefanski trying to get ready for that team that already knows what they're going to do. Yeah. This Browns team, I don't even know if the Browns know who's going to be calling plays in game one. So I know this, if the Browns figure out a way to win that game, or even if they keep it close, a game that could go 50-50, we remember what happened last year sure. when Nick Chubb ran all over them and they were able to force Lamar Jackson to play from behind and they beat them. Uh, if they can pull that off in week one this year, then I think we've got the right coach. I, I look at it as a two-pronged uh, opening day. 
Uh, yeah, you, you don't want to get beat and certainly get beat badly by Baltimore. But my, my hope is that between the two game, game one and game two with Cincinnati, that they win one of the two games as opposed to making, coming close in one of them and not coming close in the other. Well, you, you absolutely have to win the Cincinnati game, and you can't allow Baker Mayfield to get outplayed by Joe Burrow. Right. You can't, you can't allow a guy who basically has zero experience, no preseason games, uh, to beat you on Thursday night football. I don't know if there are going to be fans uh, in a stance for that one, but that would be a devastating blow to, to, to launch into the season. And that's what this Browns team, you saw their psyche fall apart last year after the Miles Garrett uh, fiasco. They can't afford to get behind the eight ball early no, in the season. No question. Sources tell Cleveland.com that the Browns had serious trade talks for Yannick Ngakwe, who was ultimately uh, traded to Minnesota. Ngakwe is somebody, and Mary Kay Cabot has been just touting him uh, most of yeah. the preseason. Did the Browns make the right move uh, going with uh, Ver Vernon instead of Ngakwe? Well, uh, supposedly, you know, they were looking into it. Uh, never got it done. Uh, I'm not sure why they couldn't get it done. I wanted another pass rusher. And I never – also, I, it always bothered me that it was one or the other. Like, when we were talking about Jadavion Clowney, who still, to my knowledge, is still not on a football team, uh, I never understood why it had to be one or the other and why the Browns have the most cap space in the NFL right now could not – go out there and address their their uh, an area that could become a strength if they had more on that defensive line. I always say you can never have enough pass rushers. It's the second most important position behind the NFL quarterback in this day and age where you have to create havoc, you have to get to the quarterback, and you have to disrupt other teams' passing attacks. And right now, they're kind of lean because you saw what happened when Miles Garrett went down last year. Yeah. Uh, they got nothing out of Ogan Joby. Uh, Vernon was somebody who just couldn't be counted on throughout the year. Uh, obviously, an injury for the third straight year has been an issue for him. But I, I told you, man, I am nervous about that defense. Anthony Lima can be heard with Ken Carmen on 92.3 The Fan. That's from uh, 6 until 10 every uh, Monday through Friday. Also, you're still on the national show, right? You're still fooling them that way. Right now on Sundays, I have no idea how. It's a, it's a, I've got good writers. Do they think that you know what's going on in Seattle and Denver and all that stuff? Or you, you just... Fake it as you've done for 20 years now. <laughs> oh, you could tell. <laughs> uh, you know, take you, you do take it very you, well. You know, uh, behind the curtain. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's fun. It's fun getting calls from people all around the country that think that all of a sudden, just because I'm in the media, I hate their teams too. Right. And I'm like, man, people in Cleveland think I hate the Browns and the Indians at times and the Cavs. Like, uh, no, I'll, 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 I, unless you got to tell them like it is, right? You just yeah. can't pull punches in this business. Absolutely. Get in and get out. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Uh, if you've been following the show, we've been talking about the Parkinson's virtual walk coming up. Now, the actual uh, in motion walk is on the 13th, but uh, for my team, which is moving uh, moving more with less, we're going to be at uh, Acacia, the old Acacia Country Club, which now is the preserve. That's at Cedar Road, uh, not, not far from across from Beachwood Place and uh, Sherry Park and all that. We're going to be there from about 9.45 to noon. That'll be this Saturday. So if you signed up to be with my team, that's when our team will meet. Uh, the rest of it will go the next week, but we'd like to meet some of the people. Some, so many generous people. We appreciate the, the uh, gifts uh, towards In Motion, and uh, we, we couldn't do it without you. This uh, really helps the caretakers for uh, patients with Parkinson's so they don't have to have any any uh, any other uh, payment, any other uh, bills that are due, and uh, Pals in Motion is just tremendous. And we we thank you all very very much. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back in a moment, and uh, of course uh, we are powered by Cleveland.com.
We're living in uncertain times, but you don't have to put your future on hold. At Tri-C, you can move ahead while staying safe and saving money. The majority of fall classes will take place online, but we've added a variety of formats to meet your learning needs. And we've taken many steps to keep you safe on campus. Whether you're ready to get started or your four-year plans have changed, check out Tri-C's programs and resources because Tri-C is where futures begin. Well, hello everyone. Let me tell you a little bit about Brown's Football Insider. For only $3.99 a month, you can get text sent right to your phone each day from me, Dan Lobby, Scott Pasco, and Ellis Williams. In addition to that, you'll receive a Football Insider newsletter every day with special things from us, uh, things that you won't see anywhere else on the site. Uh, you'll get breaking news, analysis, features, film breakdown, and things like that. Texting us directly gives you a great chance to cut through the clutter of Facebook, Twitter, other social media, and avoid the trolls. Also, it's the only way to get your questions on the Orange and Brown Talk podcast. So why should you sign up? Try a 14-day free trial. You can cancel at any time. All it takes is one text, but you won't want to cancel. We have hundreds of subscribers join us over the last year. They love it and have stayed with us. We're seeing the Football Insider community grow every week and it's only $3.99 a month, which is less than 14 cents a day. What I like most about Football Insider is the opportunity to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and really communicate with you. So how can you become a Football Insider? You can click on cleveland.com slash browns, the blue banner at the top of the page, or easier yet, text me at 216-208-3965. Again, that's 216-208-3965. Three nine six five. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at SmileyOne.com. Hi, welcome back to more sports in Les Sylvine. Les, Anthony, one of the glaring problems in 2019 was Baker Mayfield's and Odell Beckham's lack of chemistry. Pro Football Focus says that Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham can become a dynamic duo in 2020. They say, while it's fair to place some blame on the old regime, Mayfield made some uncharacteristic mistakes. He abandoned clean pockets, had poor overall pocket presence, and forced far too many throws to the wide receiver duo of Beckham and Jarvis Landry. Mayfield himself doubled down on the quarterback wide receiver connection improvement. With Kevin Stefanski leading the way, we believe Mayfield and Odell Beckham can get back to their top tier status in 2020. So Les, Anthony, want to see what you guys think. Can Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham reestablish their chemistry effectively in 2020? I see there's no reason that they can't. Well, the good news is the talent is there for both of them. And I've been down on Baker Mayfield. I've been down on uh, his erratic uh, style of play, just some of the things he did last year when everyone was ripping the offense and everyone saying that it was all Freddie Kitchen's fault. That may be. He, he might have been a legitimate hindrance. It certainly seems like the players think it was. But remember, he was also the offensive coordinator of the year before when Baker Mayfield got unleashed on the rest of the NFL and he put up those record-breaking rookie numbers. And just like Pro Football Focus said right there, he abandoned clean pockets, so he was skittish. He was in panic mode, didn't trust anybody, and then he was still airmailing guys. So his fundamentals obviously were a little bit off. They've been working on footwork since day one. And the good news about Odell Beckham is just that it seems like he's legitimately healthy. And by all accounts, uh, people have been amazed by what they've seen so far in camp. Now, you know, let's see it on the football field when it actually counts. But so far, so good from Odell Beckham. All right, many of the Browns rookies uh, and new, new players uh, came into town and finally got a look uh, and what it's like to be at the Cleveland at uh, First Energy uh, Stadium and play in the scrimmage there. Do we uh, have any reason to be concerned because Case Keenum outperformed Mayfield for the most part? Mayfield was uh, 11 for 14, 156 yards, no touchdowns. Keenum, uh, Keenum was uh, 10 for 12, 
139 and two touchdowns. We, we don't need to throw out the whole season right now, should we? No. No, and I, I said you could make the argument, and I'm glad they're not going to be doing this, but you could make the argument that Case Keenum is somebody who's going to know this offense better. He's a veteran. Remember, he went 12-3 and three with uh, Stefanski as his quarterback coach a few years ago and went into the playoffs and had some success. So uh, you could make the point that you'd be safer with Case Keenum this year. But the reality is he does not have the high ceiling that Baker Mayfield has. He can't make every throw like Baker Mayfield can. Right. So but they're also, in a roll with Baker Mayfield, and you just better pray they don't get off to a slow start because I do not think this organization that did not draft him and a head coach that wasn't here when he got drafted will hesitate uh, to pull the plug. No, they don't want to run through the whole charade of looking for another fr uh, franchise quarterback, but it, it would be nice if Baker could just do it and get it over with. Um, it, you also wonder on Keenum, he played against the uh, second string unit, uh, the first string unit, and uh, Baker played against the first and couldn't wrap up uh, those kind of numbers. But I, I don't see that as a problem at all, one way or the other. Uh, do we have a first string unit on defense? <laughs> no, that Miles Garrett was not well, out there. Somebody's going to have to start. On, somebody's going to have to go yeah, based out there. On, I know, based on what I've seen from those guys. Uh, at least the, the big names are not exactly there. And I'll be curious to see how aggressive right. uh, that uh, Andrew Barry is going to be before the season starts. So if it's not too early to be alarmed, at what week should we be alarmed? Well, I'm not going to go crazy if they lose like everyone expects them to in that opening game uh, against Baltimore. I mean, they should lose that game. Baltimore has got every advantage in the world. What happens then on the short week for Joe Burrow to get ready for the Browns on a Thursday night and I know the fans aren't really going to be there, or if there are, they're going to be few and far between. Uh, if you can't beat Joe Burrow, I don't care how good Joe Burrow was last year at LSU. had one of the most perfect, greatest uh, seasons in college football, recent college football history. I mean, that's how good he was. But if you're telling me that in that second game on a short week, he's going to get ready for an NFL game in prime time, you I, just I, can't I, let that guy beat I you. I couldn't imagine. Not only that, their offensive line is amongst the worst in football. It is. It is. Here's one thing, though, that I'm a little nervous about. Les, where did this J.C. Treader uh, injury turn into something that he could miss the first or second week of the season? That is not what the doctor ordered no. uh, to try and get ready for the Ravens in week one. Good luck. In fact, if he's going to be gone for a couple of weeks, I'd rather stretch it out and, and be gone a little longer than that and then get ready for game four or five, something like that. Well, make sure he's healthy. Now, that's a guy who did yeah. play through a bum ankle for an entire season. One, so I, I don't question his ability to try to play through pain, but you don't want it to be something they can't afford to lose that guy. We all know no. that there's just no chance no question. Uh, they can afford to, to have him miss any more than just a game or two. Northeast Factory Direct, three locations plus the great website you're going to check before you go anywhere. Check it out. Uh, there you see West 140th Street near the airport, Lakeland Boulevard in Euclid, three way drive that's in Macedonia, and uh, Northeast Factory Direct. You're going to save up to up to and even more than 50%. We'll take a break with Anthony Lima. We are powered by Cleveland.com. Never replace your basement flooring again. Act now for huge summer savings on our exclusive Nature's Pearl Stone. As low as $2.99 a square foot plus installation. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Presque Isle Downs and Casino has sports betting. 
Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. This state in uh, sports history, Ken Griffey Sr. and Jr. become the first father-son to play in the same game at, uh, in MLB, MLB history. That, of course, uh, with uh, Seattle, right? 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Birthdays for today, Pete Newell, Frank Robinson, former Indians manager, MVP in the American League and National League. Bobby Sox was born on this state. Larry Fitzgerald, uh, Eric Gonzalez, and uh, Christian Kirksey all born on this state. Anthony, uh, John Thompson Sr. passed away today at the age of 68. In your Big East travels, do you have anything going on with him at Georgetown? Got a chance to meet him. In fact, really cool. There was a summer league uh, uh, basketball games over at Georgetown, and he was just sitting there. And I was, I mean, the guy was six foot ten, and so he was every bit as big as kind of the legend and the shadow that sure. he uh, always cast over college basketball in the Big East. And so I got a chance to talk to him about, you know, just watching players, what he was looking for. Uh, and obviously he was a broadcaster in the NCAA tournaments, uh, you know, a little bit later on while his son was the head coach at Georgetown at the time. And now uh, Patrick Ewing is there, he, quite a legend. And the stories that have come out. And uh, look, the, the, a lot of the players, what you've seen over the past two months when it comes to using their platforms to try to make changes and to try to talk about what's happening in their neighborhoods. This guy was doing it uh, 30 years ago and he was doing it by himself. You know, he was saying very unpopular things at the time. And so he, he took on that villain role, uh, which is unbelievable. He could ever be viewed as a villain. And then to hear what Allen Iverson had to say over the last few days, uh, certainly today, some of the stories, Allen Iverson says he owes his life. He owes his life. Uh, to Big John because no other teams were willing to take him on after he was involved in some incidents in high school. And then look at what happens. He ends up playing for an NBA championship. He's a Hall of Famer, goes down as one of the best short players to ever live, guys under six feet. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that that guy is all-time legendary status uh, as a head coach in college basketball, one of the Titans. We have a uh, Facebook question of the day. What's the best trade the Indians have made in recent history? Andy Meese says getting Andrew Miller gave the Indians bullpen yeah. a much needed rest in their uh, improbable World Series run in 2016. Bob Paulson says the Corey Kluber uh, for Jake Westbrook trade, two Cy Young awards uh, they get from it. And, and Westbrook was, was good here. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have the voice of, uh, uh, voicemail of truth and reason. If you uh, can't get us during the live show, which goes from 6 to 7 p.m., uh, 6 to 7 p.m. Monday through Thursday, you want to check us out, you can do that anytime. 216-200-6650 is the number to call. Leave a message and we'll get to it on the air. 216-575-0403, Anthony Lima with us. Uh, what, what do you, right now, do you know what your show is basically going to be made up of tomorrow? You, I assume you're going to go with the Indians deal, but you also have the Browns getting ready. How do you decide, or do you wait, do you wait just to see how the show goes early on? We just see who talks louder and interrupts faster. That normally works out on our show, and people love it. Um, I, we also got thrown in their college football, some late-breaking news today about the decision-making process, the vote that led to the Big Ten. Uh, we've had a lot of misinformation about it, and you don't know whether to trust or how reliable this new information is, but they said uh, that Ohio State, Iowa, and Nebraska were the three dissenters in the Big Ten of the 14 teams. They wanted to keep uh, playing. That, that, that they wanted to keep playing. We had had different information before that. Uh, and then what does that make you think about Kevin Warren, who's been getting crushed universally, the commissioner of the Big Ten, if he let everybody vote on it, and it was 14, uh, is 11 to three, uh, then where do you go with that information? So uh, we'll definitely be talking about that. How, how about if that report is true, that means that Michigan and Penn State did no. not vote to continue. What, what do you suppose is and behind Wisconsin, that? And Wisconsin. Wis and Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's shocking to me. You know, Wisconsin, Barry Alvarez had talked a lot about the sheer money and the programs that were going to get cut uh, because of that. Iowa, they had to end up cutting programs. So I understand why they voted the way they did. They've already decimated their athletic department. And by the way, Les, these athletic departments, I do not think will recover. We always talk about this pandemic, what businesses are going to come back, which ones aren't. 
uh, which ones were vulnerable to begin with. Uh, I'll tell you that a lot of these athletic programs in the Big Ten footprint and beyond, you know, go to the SEC, go to the Pac-12. Uh, I think Stanford's already talked about having to cut a number of programs. And they've always had uh, near the amount that Ohio State had. Ohio no, but State went into the year, I think, with 36, 37. No, but it's not going to change football and basketball, is it? You know, I do wonder if they're going to look differently at the way that these athletic departments are structured, uh, paying some of the coaches. Now, places like Ohio State, they're always going to pay top dollar for the top coaches. Sure, the kayak but I coach wonder makes if other a programs are going to have a tough – I think other programs could have a tough time trying to impress upon some of their, their people who do the fundraising, the do you, donors, the do, boosters. Do you think there will be an attempt to change Title IX? Wow, you know, Title IX, if you've ever talked to anybody in an athletic department, uh, it pretty much is the guiding light for every decision that is made. And, I mean, we'd be talking about uh, the constitutional amendment to try to uh, get somebody to overturn something like that. There'd be uh, heavy-duty litigation on something. Title IX, I think, in the NCAA's world, is going to be there to stay. By the way, uh, we're making a change or two in our scheduling because of the uh, the Browns and the way they go and Mary Kay Cabot and how – how much time she devotes that way. Mary Kay will not be with us on Thursdays as she usually is. She'll take a couple of weeks off and then she'll be here. Well, we'll figure out when she'll be here. Bud Shaw is going to move over to Mondays after tomorrow. So Bud will be here tomorrow. And then uh, the following Monday, he will be on Mondays for a while until Mary Kay can get herself established. The voicemail of truth and reason we have done. We are powered by Cleveland.com. Les Levine, more sports than Les Levine with Anthony Lima continues one more time. Powered by Cleveland.com. Wow! Get Nature Stone and never replace your garage flooring again. Act now for huge summer savings on our exclusive Nature's Blend Stone. As low as $2.99 a square foot plus installation. Only Nature Stone eliminates cracked, uneven concrete. And Nature Stone never peels like cheap paints and coatings. Safe, beautiful garage flooring that's always backed by Russell's Promise our true unconditional warranty. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. All right, tomorrow night, uh, Bud Shaw will join us, and then we'll move him over to Mondays uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. And you see us from 6 until 7 Eastern Time, uh, p.m., at, uh, all over the country. You can archive us uh, anytime you want right here uh, with more sports and less Levine, which is powered by Cleveland.com. Anthony Lima with us. You can hear him 6 to 10. Uh, all over, with the, uh, the app, you can hear all over the country, right, free. Yeah, not only that, uh, we archive the shows for 24 hours. You can rewind. You can go catch up on everything. And uh, I'll tell you, the, the one sacrifice that's made there is we're not getting those phone calls at 6 in the morning anymore because people are like, oh, we can just listen yeah, at 8 we'll o'clock. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wake up later. By the way, are you, uh, does Mr. Gullible ever call you? If he does, he's disguising his voice okay. as well as his, uh, his pseudonym. Well, here's my problem with him. He, I, I make choices whether I'm going to use his how come quickies or not. And he wants to know, what, what do I care? Why do, why do I do that? Tom Brenneman is the reason I, I check in what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, probably smart way to go. So gullible, I can't get you on. However, Wally wants to know how come pretty ugly is much worse than just ugly. Good point. Mr. Gullible's into zombies lately. 
I don't need that. He's losing thing. his mind. You know what, Les? There's a, there's a lot of people out there. I mean, just look at the meltdown videos. I hate to say this, uh, and I'm not making a any kind of political statement when I say this, but it is, has become for me, watching some of those videos has been a treat. Just the meltdowns, the people uh, that won't wear the masks in the stores, regardless of how you feel about any of that stuff, uh, there is still... Uh, something to cherish about people just losing their minds. There's nothing to cherish about people who are causing other people to die. That's just my <laughs> the way I look at it. So you have one of those weird common sense approaches <laughs> that I've been hearing about. Exactly. All right, you got about two minutes here. Spew on anything you want, uh, whether it's the Indians, the Browns, you name well, it. Well, we got to do the Cavs. I'm worried. I'm worried about the future of the Cavs in the city. I am right now. Future as a uh, franchise. I'm well, I don't know about that yet. I, I just hear from so many of my friends and their friends and people around me that I grew up with. They're done. They're done with the Cavs. They're done with the direction of the team. Uh, LeBron made it easy for them to leave because they, well, he won the title and left. So why shouldn't they leave? I'm hearing a lot of that. And, you know, there are a lot of people that just feel like the NBA is shoehorning in political messages and activism that they just don't want to see, especially in an election year. So I wonder how the Cavs and, and the NBA can recover with some of its season ticket base uh, after something like well, that. Well, other than the, what you do for a living, you and your, your ilk, for lack of better words, you're right in their wheelhouse, aren't you, as far as fandom is concerned? Hey, I love the NBA, I, I, and I don't, I don't care what, what messages, whatever they want to – now, I'm with the players on a lot of that messaging – uh, but I can understand if you feel like it's too much. If you if you want to use uh, sports as a way to get away from some of that. But I got news for you. Unfortunately, in the year 2020, you're not going to be able to avoid it anywhere. Wait till you see the NFL this year. Wait till you go to a restaurant. Go anywhere. Look I, at the the information you might have on signage. Or I'd love whatever. to go to a restaurant. It's, uh, we'd love to have you come to a restaurant. But it's sad. It's sad. It's tough to avoid politics. Or anywhere or controversy anywhere and there's nowhere you go where you're not talking about covid as well so i wonder how sports is going to deal with some of the resentment that you know some of the people are feeling you know how many people have called the browns about baker mayfield saying he's gonna kneel for the anthem i know people work for the browns and they're wondering if people are gonna go away like they are threatening to no well, because of what because of baker mayfield you know reaffirming time and time again that he will kneel for the national anthem and there's 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 just this uh, unfortunate divide right now between it's like we're we're screaming at each other we're having two different conversations we're having two different conversations everybody feels attacked a hundred percent of the society right now feels that they are being attacked and their values are being attacked Do you know and that because of that it's just getting nasty it's almost a how come quickie but are you aware that if if we didn't have sporting events nobody would know the words to the national anthem <laughs> yeah they don't. Wait, Les, before your show, you don't play it before you go to work? We do, but we do, we, we do it before the, we come on the air. By the way, wasn't yeah, that no, an easier to, way of... We used to do the Pledge of Allegiance every day. What, wasn't, that, wasn't that a way... We used to do the Pledge. Yeah. But wasn't that a way to solve it without before it got into as deep as it got and just have it at a quarter to one while the teams are in the locker room? I wonder what the NFL is going to say with the fans and their appetite for a lot of, of this messaging. I wonder how much of the national anthem you're going to see beyond week one. I do. You mean televising on air, you mean? Yeah. Wow. They just don't want to deal with it. Unless they told you that time and time again, even though Commissioner Roger Goodell has now reversed course and said he's learned from that experience. You even had Drew Brees, who felt like he got pressured to change his mind on all of this. I just have a feeling that the league, its partners, if they see a drop in ratings like we did four years ago because of the, the Kaepernick protest, I think you might not be seeing the national anthem. Yeah, but how did they let that happen? They, they sort of gave their approval of it somewhere along the line. They didn't have to do it. I, I think everybody's running for cover right now on these issues. And I can't, I can't remind you enough uh, and I've tried to avoid a lot of it, but it is an election year. So, you know, sports are being used as a tool. I just saw, uh, you know, Joe Biden put out a campaign ad, 30-second ad trashing our current president over the loss of football in the Big Ten. So, you know, these sides are using it to try to gain political traction, and fans are tired of it. 
All right, that'll do it for us. Great job by Anthony Lima, as always. You can hear him with Ken Carmen from uh, ten and from uh, six until ten, Monday through Friday. That, of course, on uh, ninety-two three, the fan. You also hear him on weekends nationally, which is pretty cool. I'm very proud of him and the job that he has done. That'll do it for us. We'll see you tomorrow night with Bud Shaw of all the shows I've ever done. This was the most recent. <laughs>